Welcome back YouTube, to to uk This is a NES Mini Classic. This is RetroArch. This is emulation, full force. Yeah, and, um, the clever people over at uh, GBA Temp and across the globe, uh, hacking gurus that they are, they've took the next step and we're now running um, emulation within the NES Mini. Uh, this was obviously one of the sort of holy grails that Cluster uh, had mentioned before and was technically possible. Clever people have obviously managed to do this. This is going to be a video, uh, like I say, pretty much similar to my previous ones. I can give you the instructions, you can go away and do it. Some people, they're like a visual uh, guidance, and this is just my my take on, on how to do it, uh, essentially. So, yeah, uh, over here, again, GBA Temp which is you know a very good resource for all things NES Mini and, and uh, the Hatchy Hatchy 2 program um, and a fellow uh, looks like he's Russian uh, yeah fellow Russian there you can see uh, PCM he's taken um, some of the core um, uh, um, instructions from uh, Mad Monkey applied RetroArch binary to clusters wonderful Apache 2 application and what this allows you to do is um, install RetroArch. RetroArch is a, is a very powerful uh, front-end emulation. It calls other emulators within it. Um, it can get a bit confusing if you if you're not um, you know if you're not of the emulation world should we say. I've, I've not really had much to do with RetroArch before. I must admit some of the emulators within it do are familiar to me and they may be familiar to you but essentially it, it, it allows you to play SNES, uh, Mega Drive, Game Boy, uh, I think even Neo Geo, it, it, it's very, very powerful RetroArch. Um, this, even in uh, PCM's own words, is uh, you know a very rough and ready way of getting it to work. Cluster and the team, and I'm sure other people out there are going to you know get this process down to a T and make it very, very slick. But for them that want to get on board early, get some you know SNES or uh, Mega Drive Genesis um, games on there and up and running. I'll show you how to do it. So, uh, what I would probably say from the uh, from the outset is, I wouldn't try this if you haven't managed to, um, you know, hack your NES Mini previously. I wouldn't jump this far into it. Look at my previous videos; they'll be linked at the end, just to get your NES Mini in in, in its right state. PCM even sort of says, you know, you're better off applying this to a pre-existing, you know, uh, hack. Or, or patched uh, NES Mini, and I would I would I would concur with that as well. Uh, another point just before this, please make sure you get 7-zip, not WinRAR or WinZip. Uh, they, there are known issues with uh, file permissions, etc. With those two, so have a quick Google 7-zip. Uh, and um, again, as per usual, there'd be no ROMs shown here, uh, no ROM location shown here. You have to source the ROMs yourself. Um, clearly. You know, you need to own the games and for you to be able to, you know, utilize those ROMs. And I'm sure you all know that. Let's get moving anyway. And, um, you know, let's get your NES Mini uh, hacked and patched to play SNES and Mega Drive or Genesis titles. So first up, what we need to do, uh, head over to GBA Temp. Well, you don't need to because I'll put all these links down below. But essentially, uh, PCM has very kindly uh, hosted the, the sort of core library files on his Google Drive. So if you right click or you load up the Google Drive link, so here you can see uh, RetroArch, yeah, so rarch.zip, two items. Now what you need to do here is on the right hand side, there'll be a little arrow, there you can see it says download. We need to click download. Um, obviously I've got pop-ups blocked, so just to make sure you allow pop-ups. Um, so you click it again, it'll go off, you get the prompt do you want to save RetroArch so again save as now as with all of my videos I've, I've just kept the same folder um, formation uh, so for me I've created again on my desktop as you can see here one that's called RetroArch NES Mini you know along with the other videos where I've created Hatchy and stuff like that just to keep things dead simple in line I know where everything is so you save your RetroArch uh, zip archive to wherever you, you choose. Again, like I say, I've created a separate directory for it. So we don't need this anymore. We can get rid of this page. We go over to that folder. So on the desktop, RetroArch Mini. Yeah, so there's the, the zip file. 
So you would double click this, it loads up 7-zip. Now what you need to do, following PCM's instructions, is extract the contents to the Hatchy 2 folder and agree to replace init file. So the easiest way to do this, to explain this, is just basically overwrite everything. So you need to go to extract, gives you a browser window. So you need to locate your Hatchy 2 folder. So again, you know, my setup is I created an Esmini Hack 2 folder, Hatchy 2 is there. Click on the root folder, and what this will do, it will take these two folders here, you can just see behind, and it'll overwrite them into here. So you say OK. So that's where I'm extracted to, literally over the top. You say OK, it's going to now come back saying these already exist. Just say yes to all. It'll go away and it'll patch them, or it'll overwrite them. Um, my very limited understanding is it does some minor alterations to the config of Hatchy 2, and obviously. Uh, enables uh, the, the core libraries for RetroArch uh, to be um, uploaded within Hatchy 2. So we don't need 7.zip anymore, we can get rid of that. Right, so the next step is basically to copy any additional cores to games slash CLVHRArch. You can see the directory there. Now why it says it's not necessary because essentially, and if we go over to um, the actual folder, Hatchy 2. Just bear with me, let's get rid of that one because I don't need that one yet. If we go over to the location that it's saying, so within Hatchy 2, games. So it's this folder here. So this is the folder that it's created when we've copied the, those um, directories over. So our arch within here. Uh, lib retro, library retro, and then core. Right. So what the cores are are basically um, emulators. So there you go. You see, you can see it's SNES 9X, Nestopia. So you, there is an, uh, an as bizarre as it sounds, there's a Nintendo, there's an NES NES emulator within the NES Mini uh, emulator. There's a Genesis Mega Drive. Um, I'm sure that's game. Game Boy. I'm not sure what Stellar is. I think Stellar might, and that might be arcade. I don't know. So you could put, you know, Neo Geo or whatever in there. I'm not. I'm not um, going to be discussing them. I've got some SNES stuff. I'm just keeping this Nintendo. You can put, you know, your Sonics and all that kind of stuff in there. And I've got a couple of NES titles um, that don't currently function because of mapper issues. So I'm going to show, hopefully, show them working. Um, I, I haven't tried those yet. So anyway, that's just for info. So there is the possibility to run multiple different emulators from within your NES Mini. Okay, that's I just want to cover that because it does link into this, which is quite useful. So you're already at that directory. So it then, then says, which is, you know, the meat and potatoes of it, let's get the games on there. So within that folder, what we need to do is go back up to uh, uh, lib retro. So we just move up a, a folder. And then here we've got ROMs. So again, list of games, list of ROMs, you can see there, some, um, obviously clearly not NES titles, some are. Uh, I'm not sure if RetroArch supports uh, .zip format, I've not took that risk yet, I've just extracted um, the ROMs and copied them to this folder. So what I've got here, as you can see, is a number of, um, and it's tower to size, so the Super Nintendo ones are a lot bigger than the, tr the traditional NES uh, uh, folders that uh, files that uh, file, games in terms of file size okay so NES titles all end dot NES the ROMs now nin uh, Super Nintendo and dot SFC so that's a, a, actually abbreviation for Super Famicom which is the Japanese version of the Super Nintendo so I've got a number in there you can see you know uh, in terms of file sizes they're a lot bigger I've also got a couple of NES titles so Japanese Star Wars We've got Crisis Force, uh, and also we've got uh, Kid Dracula. So these ones never worked, um, Kid Dracula, Crisis Force, or Star Wars, because of map issues. I'm hoping with Nestopia within RetroArch, we can play them. Uh, and obviously then, like I say, you've got some uh, Super Nintendo games here. I would probably err on the side of caution. I wouldn't start loading up 
tons and tons of Super Nintendo or Mega Drive Genesis um, games into this. You've got a limit of, of, of around 300 meg storage for the NES Mini. So you're clearly not going to get all the NES library and all the SNES library and everything out on here. It's not going to happen. Just be clever. Just be sensible, guys. You know, uh, I say for me, I'm probably just going to put some of the the main uh, titles for the SNES on here, and you know, mainly the, the RPGs because that's really my bag. So that's where the your, your sort of games go, the ROM files go. Okay. So they're they're there, they're sat there. Now what we need to do is actually start up Hatchy Two. Okay, so if we go back up to here, um, sorry, back up into Hatchy, so we're just moving back through the folders, back into the root. This looks familiar, you've all seen this. Uh, I say, get comfortable, look at my previous video to make sure that you, you're happy and you're proficient in, 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 in patching or hacking uh, the NES Mini. So we load up Hatchy 2 as per the guidance. We'll give it a minute. It's churning away. So here we go. Again, quite a familiar um, screen. You've seen us all before. None of the games are selected. Again, you guys may have more or less. What uh, My uh, guidance to you would be, within this window, right-click, unselect all. Okay, so you've got none selected, so it's, it's a blank canvas. Uh, I will add in the original 30 games, purely for uh, testing purposes and continuity. Now. If we go back to the guidance, what it says here, um, in terms of uh, these folders, etc., ignore that at the minute. Um, we're not going to tinker with the folder managers. I've, I've heard some stories with RetroArc not being too comfortable with folders at the minute. Uh, again, it, it, this is all, you know, sort of um, very new, uh, and I'm sure the guys there will figure it out. But for the, for the purpose of this video, we're not going to alter this at all. Um, so we're not going to change any of that. But when it says here, open Hatchy 2 and enable RetroArch. So when it's talked about enabling RetroArch, what it actually means is within the list of games, if we go down to R, if we scroll all the way down to R, you can see there's actually a sort of quote-unquote game called RetroArch. So you enable that, look this little Space Invader. You can Google, you can change... The icon to so click Google, give you a list of possibilities. That one looks quite fitting. We'll take that one. Um, I say it's not just Super Nintendo emulation. That's mainly what I'm going to be using it for. Um, so all we've all we've got now, we've got RetroArch loaded. Well, not loaded, selected, and just the original 30 games. So I mentioned about the folders. Uh, basically, Hatchy. If you select within um the maximum games per page if you make it 90 it won't create any folders obviously if you go to 91 you're going to have problems um but what at the minute all we've got is 31 so we've got the 30 original games and the one for retro out 31 so 90 it won't create any folders okay i don't want any folders at the minute so there we go um and then like i say we can five and six We'll, we'll sort of ignore because they're not relevant at the minute and then we synchronize so this is you know the bit that you've all seen before that process has not changed so we synchronize select games and there's mini so what you don't see here is you don't have the ability to pick those rom files within retroarch they're all it's all a manual copy and copy out process so you don't see any of the snes games and you don't see those additional nes titles that are put in here Okay, this is just synchronizing RetroArch as a as a as a single folder. Okay, this process you've seen it all before. You hold the reset, you press your power, you wait for it to detect, it starts loading, and you release it. I'm going to leave this running just to give you an idea of, of times, because obviously um, a lot of people I think have gone powerful lever and they've, they've chucked God knows how much games onto it. Uh, and the sort of complaint now the red light hasn't gone out so keep it simple guys that's the best thing i can best advice i can give you at the minute you know just keep it simple uh, i'm doing this basically purely um so that i know if i've got the 30 games on there and i've got retro arc if, if that works i know the process works if i then go ahead and start adding i don't know 
25, 30 SNES games and then I get issues, I know it's a problem with the games that I've added in or the, the, you know, the size of the files that I've added in, not the actual process. Um, because you, 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 know, you can cause yourself more problems than, than, than you need by going a bit mad, essentially. So this is still uploading. Um, so in terms of the actual file sizes of the ROMs, you know, uh, that's, that's the wrong folder. Mine aren't, and I say it just gives you an idea. You can see the timer. What we've got in terms of the file size is 20 meg, 20.7 meg. So this is how long 20.7 meg will take to flash. And we're still going along now. Um, but yeah, many thanks to all the new subs. I really do appreciate it. I hope these videos are useful. Um, no doubt um, there will, there, well, I know there is, there's a new version of Hatchy coming out with uh, that manages folders better. And um, he's definitely going to be doing something with, with RetroArch. RetroArch, will, I think, will, will, will take over. It's going to, it's the future. It's the future of the NES Mini. Uh, obviously, the limitations are it's just its core storage space. There's, there's clever people out there. I am sure, I have no doubt that they will get around this. Um, one question that everyone's probably going to be asking, but Tutti, the, the NES only has two buttons. How are we going to play Super Nintendo titles on it? Well, the answer is, guys, unfortunately, there might be a little small cost to your house, or you may have one um, in, your, in your cupboard somewhere, but you do need the Wii Classic controller. Uh, I'll show you a picture of that in the next video, but you do need that one. It's got the exact same connection um, that the NES Mini uses, a, a Wii connection. And that's it done. There you go. Look, so don't wait for the power light to go out and we start in this mini. I'm looking at it now. Uh, I say I'll keep this real time so you can see it. I'm still waiting for the red light to go out. Well, we're still waiting, but yeah, uh, the NES, the NES Classic, not NES Classic, the Wii Classic controller. I'm sure there are a couple, there are only a couple of quid. Light's gone out. We can click OK and uh, let's fire up. Uh, I say, unfortunately, I haven't got, I haven't really set the ability to capture um, HDMI yet at the minute. So it will be camera at the screen, but at least it allows me to show you the, the actual controller that I'm referring to. Okay guys, so as you can see now on the screen, um, it looks slightly different. Uh, point to note, when you first, when I first um, flashed NES Mini, I did get an error, I think it was a C2 error at the start, and it sort of said um, reset and factory defaults. I think that's, uh, a normal thing, obviously we've inherently changed the config on it. Uh, subsequent restarts, the error message doesn't appear, so don't panic too much. After the first time you do it, you get a C2 error, and it's you, know, you have to set, reset the language and stuff like that. It seems to save it, and I've got no problems after that. Um, yeah, so you've got your list of games. This is the uh, the Wii Classic controller. So you've seen all them, let's say, you know, they've got the Wii connection, it fits into the NES Mini fine but it just give us all the buttons, which is what we need for the SNES, because that's obviously got six buttons. Um, on this front menu, the analog sticks do work, um, but I would, I would just sort of say within RetroArch, they don't function, uh, and obviously they don't function within the emulators themselves. But yeah, you can see all the games across the bottom, look, the original 30, and as you've seen a minute ago, we've got RetroArch there with our, you know, Super Famicom icon. Uh, like I mentioned before, it's obviously almost acts like a folder or a game, but when we click onto this, it's going to start to load RetroArch the application. So you press A. Right. So this is where it can get a little bit daunting for them that, that are, you know not not too familiar. I say I've, I've not really done a great deal with RetroArch myself, uh, but what I can tell you, I can tell you what I know and how to work it. So load core, as I mentioned before, the cores are your emulators. So we go to load core, and we go down to core. So in this instance, I just want to load the SNES emulator. Right, so SNES 9X. So we click that. That's now put that into memory. Obviously, we need some games, so we need to load some content. So we click load content. So the start directory that points to the ROM um, location where we drop the, 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 the actual ROM files. So we do start directory, and it loads them in. Now, as you can see, it's only recognized the .sfc files, the Super Famicom titles, not those NES ones, because this isn't an NES emulator. Okay, you with me? 
and all you simply do is you pick your game. So let's pick a uh, Hagani, you press A, it drops it into SNES 9X. So as you can see in the top corner there, you've got the little cursor next to SNES 9X 2010, you press A. And then there we go. And all the buttons function. Yeah, so you press start for start. And we we're playing. Yeah, so you've got your Y button look. A to jump. Magic. And that's obviously changing. So all the buttons work as they would do. Okay, so yeah, it's all working. So the beauty of uh, of this one, using this controller with RetroArch, is if you press the home button, it drops you back out to a quick menu. So from here, you can save your states, a bit like save games. I've not tinkered with these, I must be honest guys, uh, I don't know you know how stable or, or useful they are, I'm pretty sure that they're fine. Uh, you can obviously resume your game, restart it, etc etc if you press uh, the B button takes you back what you can do load content would load another game right so it load it would load us back um, back into the SNES 9x and you, you can just reload an, another game back onto it if you go to load core we can change the emulator uh, so we're not even though we're not on the NES mini we're not in the NES mini side of it now we're now in RetroArch so if we press A on load core and we go to core. So let's just try the Nestopia. I haven't I haven't tried this before. So we've got Nestopia loaded. We're going to load some content. Again, we'll start directory. Right. So it's picked up the three games. Um, so these ones didn't work with the NES Mini, um, you know, um, built-in emulator. It was given mapper errors. So uh, I say these these are three of the ones that people you know quite often ask me about. Do these work? No, 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 because the map are over. So let's just try Crisis Force. Press A, run Nestopia, press A again. Here we go. So it's worked. And again, you've just got A and B as you would do with, with the NES. So it's working fine. Fantastic achievement for the uh, the NES is this title. So yeah, there you have it. So any any titles that didn't work, you know, from the front end uh, within the NES Mini, you can obviously get working uh, via RetroArch. I'll leave it there, guys. I say many thanks to all the new subscribers. Um, please like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already and hopefully I'll be back soon with a, a lot more of a slicker process uh, to get into some of these uh, wonderful um, games working. Take it easy YouTube and I'll speak to you soon, bye bye. Well, what I did forget to mention, I do apologise, if within the menu, the main menu, if you just go to quit RetroArch and press A, it will just drop you back down to the mini front end and you can go and play, you know, uh, the front end uh, NES titles. So yeah, you're not literally switching it all off. You're just dropping back out to the to the NES Mini uh, main title.